100 million barrels a day. That's what the worldwide demand for oil is. No, it's not some rounded off number. I mean, yeah, I might fluctuate a little bit. But that's the actual number. Uh, it sounds made up, but it's not. Now, uh, it kind of cracks me up when I see that on the front page of the Wall Street Journal it says, OPEC has shifted its target from 30 to 31 million barrels a day. <gasps> squawk, squawk, squawk. Okay, well, okay, that's 1 million barrels that they've shifted their uh, target to. What about the other, uh, you know, 70 some odd million barrels? Which is non OPEC. The situation is quite a bit different now than um, in previous. Um, well, now we have. Um, instead of high prices, we have low prices. We have overproduction. And there are several, quite a few factors that um, have come together. The U.S. is producing half of what we consume. And also starting to export, although I don't know if that is a significant factor. But it is, uh, we used to in import quite a, a, a quite a bit of, um, a lot more than we do now. Iraq is just coming back online. Uh, up to a, a major production after uh, decades of war and interruptions. Iran is just coming back online after um, years and years of sanctions and what have you. And they're and they're they're um, saying, "Hey, we've been broke for a long time. We're not cutting back." Russia has vast amounts. Um, I don't know how much that has increased. Um, recently, but uh, they're a major player, and um, other other countries, uh, there are other countries that have been producing it, um, uh, new, new, new players in the market that uh, haven't been over the last few decades, and uh, none of them want to cut back because they're, they're broke and they want the money. And they're, you know, Iran saying, hey, we won't cut back unless they cut back. And uh, Russia and, you know, all these guys are saying, well, um, they've agreed to only, only to not produce any more than they are now. Well, most of them are maximum production, except for Saudi Arabia, I believe. And that's why they're making the headlines, because they're about the only ones that have any flexibility as far as the ability to cut back or increase their production. Exxon is maybe 2% of world production. And they have cut back on their exploration um, recently for the first time. In many years they have not replaced their um, Reserves that the, that that they have sold this year, although for the last five years they have um, exceeded their. Um, I mean, they have found more reserves than they have consumed, I believe, and many of the other majors also have cut back on their exploration budgets, and. Um, You have uh, frackers that have drilled right up until almost breaking through, and then they're just waiting until prices go up. 
they start to go up a little bit and then a whole bunch of them are going to start breaking through and the prices are going to drop again and then boom you got all these wells that are producing you can't necessarily shut down at least not right away and then you're right back into another situation again oil is the full study of economics politics theology engineering um, the whole nine yards that is why I find it so fascinating so you have the world say so say the world demand is at a hundred and the supply is at 102 the other price is going to drop and then you get it at 99 98 and then the price is going to start going up 